I'm Atubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, can we call for that daily bread before we go into today's broadcast? Say with me, say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We are talking about being fruitful. And I think I should read our scripture just to refresh your mind. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And verse 9. Paul speaking here, he says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of of God. He's praying for you and he says that you be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Now that's God's desire for you, praise God. It's his desire. He wants you to be fruitful in every good work. Good work there is the work that he has commanded I told you, I've been telling you, he puts the seed in your heart. That's why whatever you're doing, you must wait for his word to come to you first. The word will give you direction. And the word is what gives you authority where that thing is concerned. So always wait for his word. It is when his word comes that you can clearly know that I'm going in this direction. And so I'm going to be fruitful in it. Getting up to do things by yourself may not produce fruitfulness. Now you remember Saul the king. Now Samuel had told him, hey, God says, go and destroy Amalek. And he says, destroy everything, both man and beast, and all their properties, burn them up. And Saul went for the battle, and God gave them victory. But then, they just felt that, hey, why do we have to kill everybody? Oh, let's, let's keep some. Let's, let's, you know, we capture the king alive. By the principles of war, if you capture him alive, you don't have to kill him. But God says, destroy everyone. And so, he got the king alive. And then he got some of the goods. Now, why do we destroy the goods? We can take them. These are our possessions from the war. And he let them take them. And so they got back. And then they were now using those animals they got to make do a sacrifice to the Lord. And, and Samuel walked into that place and said, hey, what's going on here? And so I said, oh, the people, the people, just, we just thought about it and that's what I want to sacrifice. And Samuel said something to Saul. He said, Saul, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hack in than the fat of rams. Now, what was he telling him? What you're doing now is not being fruitful. It's counterproductive. Because God's not going to accept it because you are giving it to him. He's not going to accept it. He told you clearly, destroy everything. And then you brought some and you say, oh, you want to keep the king as a prisoner? You don't do that. You are not productive. You are not being fruitful. You see that now? And, and that's why I, I tell people many times, you know, you hear, you hear believers say, I've been tithing, but things are not working for me. I've been, and the question you ask is, uh, is your, your, are you tithing fruitfully? See that now? It's important you tithe, but you've got to be sure you're, you're, you're tithing fruitfully. You've got to be sure that you are giving, is you're being fruitful, in your giving. And the only way you can be fruitful in your giving, the only way you can be fruitful in your tithing is when the word of the Lord comes to you consigning it. So, so anytime you tithe, you ought to go before the Lord and say, Lord, 
as a covenant child and as a seed of Abraham, I bring my tithe because you have blessed me. See that now? We tithe after we have been blessed. So I bring, because the tithe is now the testimony of the blessing. Oh, I just got some money, Lord. I, I'm bringing this report. Now, you may be walking somewhere. You're walking in an organization. And now, it is right for them to pay you. See that? It is right for them to pay you. Now, so when they pay you, you ought to bring the reports to the Lord. Now, that's why we tithe. Father, at the end of this month, you remember you, you gave me this job. And so at the end of this month, I just want to bring a report that they have paid my salary. And so Lord, as an honor to you, I bring my tithes to you. Now that's 10%. Now, it's not about the money. It is about obeying his command. I don't get into all those arguments, Old Testament, New Testament. If you are the seed of Abraham today, the covenant that connects that blessing, that promise to you is the tithe. Because Jesus is still the high priest over the tithe today. So you must be participating with him today. And call into remembrance the blessing of Abraham. So you say, Lord, I, 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 as an honor to you, I have brought out my time. And that must be the first thing that you do. You don't bring your tithe after you finish spending all the money. It must be the first thing that you do. That's what Moses meant when he told them, and you shall remember the Lord your God, because he is the one who gives you power to get well. It was he was talking about tithing. How do you remember the Lord? Say, Lord, I remember you today. You're the one who gave. That's the what he was talking about. Now that's why it's a spiritual understanding. He was admonishing them to tithe. That's the way you remember the Lord because you bring, he has already given his command where the blessing is concerned. And so when you feel I've been blessed, then you take that blessing, you take the tithe out of it, and you go before the Lord and say, Lord, I, I want to worship you with my tithe. As a, as a mark that you have blessed me. I remember that prosperity and wealth comes from you. Now that's why it should be easy to take out the tithe. Because someone say, ah. Man, I'm so broke, I'm in debt, I'm into a lot of trouble that I can't even afford to take out my tithe. Now, you, the reason you're tithing is that he gives you the power to get wealth. You see that now? So now, all those bills I have to pay. Hey, 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 hey. First of all, it is God who gives me the power to get wealth. So I've got to honor him first. And so I take that tithe and say, Lord, you are the one who gives the power to get wealth. And so, Lord, now then to seal it up and to make sure you are doing it as an act of faith, you say, Lord, I have taken it out now and I'm waiting for your instruction. What do you want me to do with this? It's your money. You give me your command, I will obey. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and you put that money aside. But sometimes, in the moment you're doing it, the word of the Lord will come to you. And give it to so, so and so. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm going to. Sometimes the word of the Lord will not come to you immediately. Put the tithe aside. Put it in a, in a bank or something. Keep it somewhere. Just, just make sure you keep. That's God's property. You know that already. Waiting for instruction on how to dispense it. Because now you are a manager of God's finances. And sometimes the word of the Lord will come to you later. It's a song that tight. Give this portion to Susan Superson. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, when you are giving it to the, giving it to the person, you are not giving the person your tight. <laughs> you have given God your tight already. See that now? Now, you are giving the person money from his father. You understand what I'm saying? That's what you're... It's like you do business with someone. Maybe the person is in a different city. 
And the person calls you and says, hey, um, they have paid the money. So I have your portion. Now that's profit from the business that you did with that person. They say, oh, I have your money. I said, oh, thank you. And then he said, okay, you know what you're going to do for me? I've got this brother in your city on social streets. Kindly go give the money to him. Now, because the brother had asked you for some money. And now when this comes, oh, great, this is an opportunity to meet my brother's need. Now, when you send that person to give the money to your brother, you are not giving your profit to your brother. You are just giving your brother money. But that person that got the money on your behalf, when he says they have paid the money and this is the problem, he gave you your profits. See that now? But he doesn't have to go meet your brother and say, your brother just did a business so, and see the profit, so take the profit. That's immaterial. You understand what I'm saying? It's immaterial. You just give him money. Oh, your brother said I should give you this money. Oh, okay, I'm going to call him and thank him. That's all that he needs to know. He doesn't need to know where the money came from. He doesn't need to know what business that you transacted. So it's the same thing. And then you go before the Lord and, and say, Lord, here's man. Now that's how you tithe. See that now? So the tithing is not in the giving of the money. In church or wherever. The tithing is the recognition of God being your source and being the one who gives you power to get wealth. That recognition and then the act of taking out the money, the 10% from that thing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The act of taking the 10% from that thing, now it is your works of faith. Now you see how the tithing brings twofold blessings into our lives. So there is the blessing of honor. You are honoring the Lord. And as long as you do that, I tell you this truth, you will never go down. And two, there is the blessing of obedience. Because now you are waiting for the Lord to give you a command. And no matter how long you have to wait, wait for that command to come. And the Lord says to you, ah, you remember you have my money. Say, yes, sir. I remember one time many years ago, you know, I've had this tithe kept. And so someone had asked me for money. And I didn't have money for the person. The, the money the person was asking. And so, but I, I saw the person was in need. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, can you help this person meet this need? And the Lord said, give him the money. I said, Lord, well, I said, now I don't have that money. He said, but you've got my money. I said, oh, oh, yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, thank you, Lord. He said, give it to him. I said, okay, thank you. And I sent the money to the person. I didn't have to tell the person. I just told the person, hey, God asked me to give you this money. So it's not like I'm giving you my money. I had the word of the Lord and he commanded me to give it to you. And the person was, you know, the need was met. And the person, you know, rejoiced and stuff like that. Now, that is an act of obedience. So now, I get blessed for tithing. And then I also get blessed for obeying God where meeting the needs of His children is concerned. Now, that's the reason I can never lack. So when I hear people say, but I tithe and, and I'm not seeing a reason, my question is, do you really tithe? Do you really tithe? See that now? I pray that the Lord will give you understanding in these things and that you will begin to be fruitful even where your giving is concerned. Because when you are fruitful in it, God himself will back it up. Now, I, I, I can never be broke. Ne it's impossible for me to be broke. Why? Because anytime I do these things, God who commanded it is there and he has to prove his word. 
And then also remember, there are angels involved in this matter. And what do the angels do? Here is it again. I told you he has given his angels charge. I think, I think I'm going to trust God to do a series on that statement. His, his charge to his angels. Praise God. Yeah. Now, now, now here is how it works. The Lord has given the angels. When you see this, my son, give money to so -so and so person, it is time to release this kind of blessing to him. So the angels are waiting. And now you come and say, Lord, I, I bring your tithes to you. And then the Lord said, give it to so -so and so person. Okay. Yes, sir. And then you, you call up the person and then the angels just notice you have given the money to the person that God told them. And the angels say, oh, that means it's time for this blessing to be released. You see that now? So it pays to obey God. It pays to be fruitful. Do your work in the direction that God has commanded it. Because you don't have time to waste. Don't waste your time in this life. Make sure every step you are taking, make sure everything you are doing, you are sure that it is bearing fruit. You are sure that you are in direction to be bring forth fruit that the Lord has ordained for you to bring forth. And the only way you can be sure of that is that his word comes to you consigning that thing. You want to give your offerings in church the same thing. Don't just say, oh, it's offering time. Ah, how much do I have to give? No, don't do that. Don't waste money. You're wasting your money. It was better you didn't give it than to give it the way you have been given. How am I supposed to give? Before you're going to church. You know you're going to church today. So what do you do? As you're, as you're trusting God that morning, praying for the day and thanking God for the day, you remember, Lord, this evening we're going to church. Lord, and I, I, I'm bringing an offering to you, Lord, because I'm going to be blessed. In anticipation of the blessing I'm going to receive today in church, I bring an offering to you as an act of my worship. And then you take that money and put it aside. Oh, but I don't have the money. Oh, you set your heart already. This is what I'm going to take to church as offering today. And you set your mind where that is concerned. And you proclaim it before the Lord. And say, Lord, you will bless it in the name of Jesus. And then when you can get the money, get it and prepare it. You don't get offering time. Oh, oh, how much do I have? Hey, I thought I carried more. Don't do that. God is not after your money. We honor him with our finances. We honor him with our substance. We don't just throw it to him. We honor him with it. Learn these principles and you're going to see how fruitful you will become where finances is concerned. You're going to see how fruitful you will become where money is concerned. And, and, and I'm, t I'm telling you, listen, your days of being broke is over. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I, listen, Listen, tomorrow, tomorrow evening by 6 p.m., we're going to be having a special meeting. And we hold this meeting every month. It's called the Spirit of Prophecy. Now, it's a meeting the Lord commanded us to hold. And during the meeting, he said, I'm going to cause my spirit of prophecy to rest upon everyone. Now, what is it? It's not for them to begin to prophesy. The Lord says it is for them to fulfill the prophecy that have been given concerning them. So it's a special meeting. It's a special impartation meeting. I don't want you to miss it for anything. <laughs> Praise God. If you're in the city of Abuja, join us. The address is on the screen. Now, if you're not in the city of Abuja, you can join us online. You can join us on, on Mixel, on Facebook, on YouTube. Just find, make sure you plug into that service. And God is surely going to bless you. God is surely going to do. There's a lot, there's a lot of prophecy over your life already. Hey, it is time to begin to fulfill every one of those prophecies. And you can only fulfill them when the spirit by which those words were given rests upon you. It's a special anointing. It's a special anointing. And I don't want you to miss it. Believe God with us. Join us in this service. And I'll tell you the truth. Miracles are going to take place in your life. We're trusting the sick will be healed. We're trusting people will be brought out of their situations. And the Spirit of God is going to bless everyone.
every one so plan towards see that's what i'm telling you today mark out your tomorrow evening 6 p.m join us live or join us online and god is surely going to bless you my time is up for today praise god but i want to pray for you father your grace and mercy are released upon everyone watching and lord Cause them to be fruitful in every good work. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A change is coming where your finances is concerned. Yeah. Things are getting easier for you. You are actually becoming fruitful. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.